Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We are going to prepare an etched metal resin bonded bridge on the maxillary right arch of this patient. The patient has lost a maxillary first molar. And uh, it's important when you fabricate a posterior bridge that you do mount the models so you can check the occlusion and the occlusal aspect of your bridge design. And then also it's important that you survey the teeth that are to be prepared. With the uh, models mounted, you have the advantage of seeing the occlusion and the way the lingual cusps come down into the embrasures. You're going to place a rest on the distal marginal ridge. You'll notice that, the, uh, that there is a uh, there's space on the uh, distal marginal ridge, so a very little preparation has to be uh, done on the um, marginal ridge of the maxillary bicuspid. However, the maxillary molar you can see has very tight interdigitation. Now I'm going to uh, turn this model around so you can see that from the uh, mesial buckle. You'll notice that the way the lingual cusp in the mesial marginal ridge uh, is on the model when you look at it from the mesial buckle, it's quite tight there. So we're going to have to do a little bit of relief to make you rest on that marginal ridge. Now from the occlusal, what we're going to do is have a rest on the distal marginal ridge. And since this is a supporting cusp, we won't be involving that. And uh, we'll be coming up and into the mesial marginal ridge. And on the molar, we'll have a stop on the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge here. We are going to make a slice that'll come out fairly far because we need a wrap around of this area. Now this slice will not show from the mesial, but we get around the tooth enough for a sufficient grasp. And uh, we're going to place a slight groove in the middle of the distal slice. On the molar, we are going to go to the lingual, and since this is a supporting cusp, we're going to stay away from the facets here, and we're going to go around like that, staying about a millimeter away from the soft tissue. We will wrap around the tooth, so we have at least 180 degree wrap around. Now I'll go to the, while well, I have this view on the bicuspid, there will be a wrap around as you see here, and this thinning out so that we can get into that occlusal area right uh, on the mesial. I'll turn this around so you can look at the molar now. And on the molar, we'll bring the slice out to this area which should be hidden by the pontic. And a finishing line there with a groove in the middle of that slice. With the use of a dental surveyor, we align the two abutment teeth to the optimum line of draw with the surveying point. And I have done that, and you'll notice that uh, there is a slight undercut at the cervical of the bicuspid, but a very little bit of disking will need to be done on that distal surface. As we turn to the mesial of the molar, you'll note also that the, the roundness of that mesial surface uh, needs to be flattened, and so we will disk that portion. Very, very little preparation to be done here, just a little bit of disking in order to flatten that. Uh, the molar surface is pretty well taken care of, as it is there. And just as we go into the mesial lingual, we'll have to do a slight bit of disking. Okay, Anna, here we go. 
light disking. You want to make sure that you stay in the mantle for this. So we're just going to flatten that. And we go onto the lingual surface slightly. Around that. So the pencil marks are important so you can see the extent of your finish line. We're going to prepare the slice on the disc of the bicuspid. And again, light touch. And just a little bit of a wrap around on that knee, just uh, distal uh, buckle. It's important that you wrap around to get grasped. Now with our mirror, we're going to check the draw. Using the front surface mirror, closing one eye, and looking down those two slices, you should be able to see the cervical. Now we can't quite. Okay. We've done our initial preparation, our slicing, and I've penciled in an area where we're going to place the groove, and I've placed one also on the distal of the bicuspid. And, uh, with the use of the mirror, front surface mirror, closing one eye, those two grooves should draw. If they don't, they're erased until the two pencil marks do, uh, do draw with each other. And uh, once that is correct, then we simply uh, take a 170 carbide, remove the pencil mark, and we have uh, the groove in the proper position. This need not be a deep groove. Just a slight groove. Okay. Place the groove on the mesial of the mower. And I'll rotate the mirror and let you see the groove then on the distal of the bicuspid. Okay. And uh, when we look at this with the front surface mirror, both of those pencil marks and grooves do draw. The next step is to place the occlusal rests. It's just deep enough to stay in the enamel. And then we'll have the patient close. Okay, we, we have uh, now clearance on that mesial area where the buccal cusp of the maxillary, a uh, mandibular more, comes up into here. So we have clearance here. Okay, we have uh, both the preparations prepared now. You'll notice the uh, occlusal rest on the distal occlusal, mesial occlusal, the wrap around, and the slice on the mesial, and on the bicuspid, the occlusal rest on the mesial and distal, the wrap around, and you can see the distal groove on the bicuspid and I'll turn this mirror a bit okay, and we have the occlusal rest on the mesa of the molar and the groove on the mesa of the molar. Mm -hmm. And we'll get this cut roll out of here. Okay. Wait. I'd like to show you the features of the impression we've recorded, uh, the groove. We've checked the margins all the way around. We have the occlusal rests. Well, you can see the mesial groove and the, uh, the margin. And on the distal, uh, the finishing line as we go on to the occlusal rest. Uh, the resin bonded bridge has now been returned to us from the laboratory. And you'll note that we have the wraparound design on the lingual surface, rests in the triangular fossa, and on the molar, a uh, rest in the triangular fossa, wraparound on the lingual, and then an arrest on the distal fossa. 
And as I turn this over, you can see that we've added some stain opaque spots on the porcelain. I'll take it off the model and show you the internal aspects of this. I'll turn this over. I'd like you to see the uh, retention design. We have at least a 180 degree wraparound. We have a groove in the inner proximal cut in the enamel. And then I'll, as I turn this around, you'll see the groove cut on the mesial of the molar, giving us resistance from a buccal to lingual manner. And then the 180 degree plus wraparound. And as I show you this angle, you can see the rests that fit in the triangular fossas that have been prepared on the molar. And I'll turn this around this way. And you can see the two rests that are prepared on the bicuspid. Now this has been treated differently than an etched metal resin bonded bridge. A base metal has been used, and uh, this happens to be Williams Lightcast B. And then the metal is sandblasted with a 50 micron aluminum oxide. Uh, and then we will be using a new adhesive called Panavia. Panavia has adhesive qualities that adhere to a base metal, plus it adheres to the etched enamel. I'd like the, to show the components of the Panavia dental adhesive kit. Uh, Panavia comes in uh, different shades. Basically, uh, the two that are most commonly used are the tooth color and regular, and the regular uh, has more of a white opaque appearance. Tooth color matches uh, the uh, cementum and dentin uh, color. In the kit, there is uh, etching liquid, etching gel, which is a 38% phosphoric uh, acid. There are uh, mixing containers and uh, a scoop. A special pad that has a plasticized cover and OxyGuard, which is a wax. This particular cement is unusual in that it is, it is oxygen inhibited. So it will not set up immediately. It will set up when you, re, uh, when you uh, keep oxygen from its surface. And so after the bridge has been seated, we will then inject this wax around all the margins, and then the cement will set up. This allows you a little more time for cleanup over the regular BIS GMA uh, resin uh, cements. Well, the first step in cementation is to remove uh, any plaque and material that are on these teeth. We will uh, do a prophylaxis with a non-fluoride uh, paste. This happens to be Zeracate. And then, uh, since the tissue is up so high on the distal of this molar, uh, we will not be able to put a rubber dam on because that clamp will impede the cementation of that distal arm. So if you're not going to use rubber dam, you have to be very, very careful you don't get salivary com uh, contamination. So uh, we are going to uh, clean these areas, make sure the plaque is removed. And then we will uh, return when we were rinsing. So now we are going to etch using a uh, etch it gel and place it on the lingual surfaces. You'll notice that we have a good, a good solid frosting and on the distal of the bicuspid and the occlusal rest. And we have protected the first bicuspid by using the, uh, the mylar matrix on that. And now we're ready to, uh, to uh, cement the bridge. The mixing is uh, rather easy. It's imperative that you roll the powder to fluff it up 
first. And then uh, after it's uh, opened, there's a little cap you pop off. And the scoop itself has a, a large end for two drops, a small end for one drop. You place the, uh, the scoop in the jar, drag it across the bar that's on the top of the jar, place it in the center of the pad. I like to make just a little indentation just like mashed potatoes and gravy. So we put the drop right in the middle. And then we will place two drops of the liquid in the center and then mix it with uh, our special mixing uh, spatula. So we'll invert this, place one drop, two drops in the center. And then this is mixed for one minute. And at first, it will appear to be almost too dry. But you continue mixing and stropping until the, the, the resin cement uh, becomes fluid. Now it's starting to get some fluidity to it. And we'll be able to get all the powder in, which is very important that all the powder does uh, get mixed in. And you continue mixing it for one minute. Now we're almost done here. Now you can see how fluid this is. Now this is then placed on the sandblasted portion of the bridge, and then that will be then carried to the mouth to be cemented in. We will then bring the, the bridge into place. We have a little bit of working time here because for the most part, this cement is oxygen inhibited, and we'll take a cut and swab and clean off a lot of the excess here and then we'll bring it down farther with an orange wood stick. We'll inject the OxyGuard, which is the wax, on this, these surfaces to keep the oxygen and air off of. And we'll run it also in the interproximal here because there are finishing lines there. And on the mesial, and make sure we get it on the distal. You can also use a brush to uh, uh, make sure this is placed in the proper places and uh, then we'll have the patient close with a little bit of pressure on this because we want to make sure this is seated all the way. Okay, can you close please? Okay, now open again, now close again and have her just close with pressure like that until the cement is set up. Ten minutes has gone by and the uh, cement is still fluid on the mixing pad, however, the cement in the mouth under the OxyGuard uh, has, uh, has set up. And now uh, we are going to remove the excess uh, OxyGuard, which is the wax, and then remove some of the, uh, some of the cement. The excess cement has been removed from the margins. You'll note that uh, the ponic is a little dark because these other teeth have dehydrated a bit. Uh, we'll have the patient back in about a week to, uh, to check oral hygiene, and uh, you'll see that the colors uh, will match much uh, nicer. I'd like to show you the design of the bridge. You can see that there's a rest on the distal occlusal, mesioclusal of the molar and a rest on the uh, mesial and distal of the bicuspid. With the wrap around, you notice that the margins are above the soft tissue, both on the bicuspid and the molar. Uh, this promotes good gingival health. It's important that the patient brush around the margins because that can collect plaque. You notice that the interdental space, the embrasures are open so that the patient can clean uh, readily in this area. And this wrap around continues right around to the lingual and distal of the molar. Now I'd like to show you this from the labials. You'll notice on the pontic we tried to duplicate the opaque spots that are on her other our original teeth here. And so we have placed these for aesthetic reasons. So you'll notice how nicely this blends together, especially when we pull the cheek back. The, uh, we have open embrasures here, 
And the way this is designed from the labial, you do not see any of the, uh, the metal. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.